because we have uh, some children who are going to share with us about Jesus and some pretty cool stuff. Um, and uh, I'm excited for that. We have in, in the church two babies, pretty, pretty common, that, that's cool stuff. That's cool stuff. We have, uh, we have four kids that are here uh, every week that uh, a couple people go back there in the back and they teach them and they work with them and we're proud of what they're learning in the back and what Jesus has done with them. And so we're going to highlight some of the stuff that they've learned today. How about that? It's not going to be a real long sermon. Aren't you glad? Can anybody say amen? It's about time. All right. I see smiles all over the congregation. I love it, right? You love it. Okay. I'd like to open with a word of, with a word of prayer, but before I do, let me, let me just... Just remind you, it is, um, I heard something this week that I thought just, I really liked. Sometimes we talk about preaching to the choir, right? Well, just thought I might say this because I loved it. We even have, even choirs have to have rehearsals, right? Yeah. I remember asking my pastor before I climbed into the pulpit for the, the first time and I knew I was going to get a church. I said, what, what do you preach? There's only so many. And he said, Carl, he said, you relax. Don't you worry about it. He said, uh, you tell them the old, old story of Jesus Christ. He said, and I promise you, those who know him best, love him most, love to hear it. So that's why you're here. Are you persuaded? That he is able to take that which you have committed against that day. Are you? Is that why you're here? Me too. Father, I just come to you in the name of Christ Jesus, and I ask, oh God, I ask for your presence to come in such a special way. Jesus, you have always, always loved children. You've taught us through children. Today I'm asking you, Lord, to do exactly that, to remind us as your children, all of us, remind us of who you are and um, what you, Lord God, have done for us and how you love us and do it through our children today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Let's stand and sing and praise his name. If you're not able to, that's okay. Blessed be your name in the land is plentiful where your streams of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name when i'm found in the desert place though i walk through the wilderness blessed be your name
down on me when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Continue to praise him.
pray together, okay? Lord Jesus, I just come to you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. I want to say to you, Lord God, thank you for who you are and thank you for what you've done for us. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. And you, Lord God, sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to come and find us, and rescue us, and save us. I thank you, Lord God, for today. I, I, I'm just, Lord, I'm pumped um, for what you do in the life of the church. We have some young people, Lord God, who have stepped up and decided that they want to be a part of, of your work. They want to be a part of us. And it's been our honor and it's been our thrill over the, the past couple years just to, to be able to mingle in their lives and have them bless our lives. We want to say thank you, Lord, for sending them. They're a gift to us. And with them came their children, precious ones, Little ones. Jesus, racing them up and down the hallways, taking them and coloring pictures and doing crafts, telling them about your son. Lord, what joy that is. This morning, I, as, as I pray for the congregation, I have intentionally wanted to remind us we are blessed. We are blessed. We've asked you to work in our church, and you've gone to work. We've asked you to grow our church, and you bring them in. We ask you, Lord God, to help us love with love that is beyond measure. Embracing. Father, I pray for those in our church that are recovering. It's good to see Tim back here. We pray for Claire. Pray for John and Linda, for Terry and Linda. We pray, Father, um, that you would just have your touch um, be upon them. I pray, Father, for those in the church, and there are several who are struggling financially. We're not blind to it. We don't turn deaf ears to it, Lord God. But I thank you to know that when we can't help, you do. In fact, Lord, help us always by example, by looking to you to provide. Help us, Lord God, to lead people to you. For you supply our every need. I pray, Father, for those, um, Pastor Pastor Judy and I were talking before the service about those who experience trauma in their lives and try to work through it. There are those, Father, who emotionally and psychologically need your help. I don't know why we shy away from it, but we do. And it's what you came to help us with. Father, we don't just pray about ourselves. We pray about our neighbors. Give us a heart. Give us a passion to love our neighbors like we'd love ourselves. Help us to take that to the highways and the byways. Help us to take that to our job places, Lord. Help us to be light and darkness. Help us, oh God, to be that which we think is impossible. Use us to speak life and hope and joy in the lives who are Lord, dying, hopeless, and joyless. Help us to share the good news. Father, we pray for not only our neighbors, we pray and we want to lift our leadership to you. We pray for those who are leaders in our workplaces. We pray for those who are leaders in our city. We pray for those who are leaders with our children in school. We pray, Father, that you would just help them I see the bend and the turn. 
We pray, Father, that you would uh, that you would help those in our state leadership and those in our national leadership, Lord, and those who meet as world leaders. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every week, Lord, we rehearse this. And yes, it is the choir and it's rehearsal time. Thank you, Lord God, for the incarnation. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the empty tomb. Thank you for the ascension. Lord God, thank you for your spirit in us. Jesus, we love you. We love you with all our being. And the people of God said, and amen. So today we are taking the opportunity on the fifth Sunday to um, bring you up to date on what's happening in Children's Church and highlight our children for a little bit. Um, we have been using what we call Celebrate Wonder curriculum. It replaced the old curriculum we used that was One Room Sunday School. It's still a one room children's church. A lot of the things have some of it good, some of it not so good, but we are adapting it to work for us, and Katie's excellent at doing that. Um, it comes from Cokesbury Publishing, which is a United Methodist 
uh, publishing house, so we don't have doctrinal issues that we have to skip and try to, they're a little more liturgical, so we don't do all their liturgical stuff they throw in there. But um, every week we have a Bible story, we have activities, we have coloring pages, we have puzzles, which I make for the ladies too, they like them. <laughs> so, and um, they, there's the theme song, which is called Celebrate Wonder, and the kids are all going to come up and sing that with us, aren't we? <laughs> we have some shy kids, so mommy's going to come with them.
encourage the kids to move around when, um, when we sing. Um, all right, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at some of the lessons we've been learning. Who have we been studying, Rachel? Who have we been studying? Joseph and his brothers, you're right. I guess we kind of gave it away. But, um, okay, there's little videos that go along with it. We're going to play them so you can see what the kids are learning and what they're getting from the curriculum. And that doesn't include things that Kate and I throw in because we know the stories really well, and sometimes we just tell them, you know. Okay, so go ahead and play the first one. This is Joseph and his brothers from Genesis 37. Greetings, friends. I'm Abigail. Come wonder with me. Did you know the Bible is full of stories about conflict? Conflict is when people disagree or can't get along. The awesome thing about the Bible is that it's also full of stories about reconciliation. Reconciliation is to bring peace between people who have disagreed. So if conflict is about separation, reconciliation is about coming back together. Reconciliation isn't always easy. Have you ever been in a fight with your siblings? Sometimes it can be hard to find peace. My little brother and I argue all the time about who gets to use the computer or who gets to decide what game we play for family night. It can be hard to come together after an argument. Sometimes we find peace later that same day, but other conflicts take more time to find reconciliation. In our Bible story today, we start a long journey towards reconciliation. Today, we meet Joseph and his 11 brothers. Joseph was different from his brothers. He had dreams about his brothers that he didn't understand. Joseph shared his dreams with his brothers, and they got really upset because they felt like Joseph thought he was better than them. Joseph's brothers were really jealous of him. They felt Joseph was treated special and didn't think it was fair that he didn't have to work in the fields like they did. Joseph's brothers decided they couldn't take it anymore, and they sold him away when their dad wasn't around. Wow, I can't believe they were so mad. Friends, this is the conflict part of the story. Think about it like this. You have two magnets. If they are flipped one way, they push apart from each other and they can't come together. This is the conflict. It takes work to flip the magnets another way so that they can come together. I know we want everything to be better right away, but sometimes it takes a long time for reconciliation to happen. And that's okay. We don't see Joseph and his brothers come together until later in the story. I know it's hard. You might have expected the family back together in one quick story, but we have to be patient and stay tuned to see what happens next. Now, it's your turn to wonder. And we continue the story of Joseph into the next video. Joseph has been sold into Egypt. everyone, it's Abigail. In our story today, we are with Joseph in a really difficult situation. Remember, his brothers sold him and he was sent far away from his home. They were mad at him for getting to do special things and sometimes bragging about it. But now he's in prison for something he didn't do. Joseph is in prison with a wine steward and a baker. Both people worked for the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Both of them had dreams one night and they were really upset about them when they woke up. When Joseph saw that they were upset, he asked about their dreams. You see, one of Joseph's gifts was to help people find meaning in their dreams. Even though Joseph was in conflict, he realized that he could use his gifts to help others. Joseph was able to tell them what their dreams meant and they found out that he was right. Joseph used his gifts to help others, even though he was in a hard situation. In the middle of a conflict, it can be really hard to use your gifts. It can be easy to just think about yourself, but Joseph showed up for others. Even before reconciliation happens, there can be good moments along the way. It's kind of like planting a seed. When you first plant a seed, you don't get a flower right away. However, you do your best each day to care for the plant. You water it and hope it grows into something even better. In the process of reconciliation, we have to do our best with what we have at the time and be patient in hoping that peace is on the way. 
Sometimes you just have to wait for what's next while doing your best in the moment. Oh, I almost forgot. So what happened with the two people that Joseph helped with their dreams? We find out later on that one of them really helps Joseph out. Joseph helped someone even during his hard situation and his kindness was remembered. Just wait and see. Now it's your turn to wonder. The next one is called Joseph Saves the Day. Who knows what happened? What happened, Kiana? You're not going to tell me? You're going to make me wonder. Okay, I wonder. Okay. Let's play the video. Hi, friends. It's Abigail. In today's story, Joseph has an opportunity to help interpret dreams again. Remember, we're still in the middle of a conflict with Joseph and his brothers, but we're learning that good things can happen during the road to reconciliation. Remember when he helped the steward and the baker understand their dreams when they were all in prison? Well, this time he got to help Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Let me tell you the story. Pharaoh woke up from a dream one morning and realized that it was very important. Dreams were important to leaders because dreams might carry a special message to help them lead better. Pharaoh looked for help to understand his dream but none of the people that worked for him could help. Then, the steward who Joseph helped before remembered that Joseph was in prison and could interpret dreams. Joseph was called upon and he told Pharaoh what his dream meant. After this, Joseph is let out of prison. Pharaoh knew what his dream meant and the whole nation was helped. Wow. Friends, sometimes we are in situations that are unfair. However, you can try your best to do what you can to help others. Last year, I was really scared when COVID-19 began. Everything changed so quickly. One day we were in school and the next day we weren't. I missed my friends and I could tell that my parents were nervous too. I felt like I didn't have control over anything. One day I was with my family and I decided to tell them a joke. I really like making people laugh and I thought that maybe I could make us feel better. My family loved my joke and we spent the rest of the night telling funny stories and making each other laugh. After that, I spent time searching for new jokes on the internet so I could make my family laugh and smile while we ate dinner together. I couldn't control everything happening around me or even understand why it was happening, but I knew I could offer my gift of spreading laughter to my family, and that made it just a little bit better. Like Joseph, we all have gifts that can help others, even in tough situations. What are some of yours? I bet you can think of a lot. In conflict, it can be easy just to focus on the bad parts of the situation. But remember that you have gifts to help, even in ways that might seem small. Now, it's your turn to wonder. As we all have gifts to help God's church and God's glory. Now, this has been Review for the Kids. Now we're on today's lesson, and Katie and Rachel are going to read the Bible story for us. She's a little shy today. not shy today. So Joseph and his brothers reunited. Jacob and his family were in trouble. There was no food to eat. Jacob sent his sons to Egypt to buy some food. By that time, Joseph had become powerful in Egypt. He was the second in command after Pharaoh. Joseph had worked very hard to store up food in Egypt. Now Joseph's brothers have arrived asking for food. What would Joseph do? Joseph's brothers asked for help, but they did not recognize their brother Joseph. Joseph gave them food, but said, bring back your other brother, Benjamin. Later, the brothers came back to Egypt for more food. This time they brought Benjamin. The brothers stood before Joseph once again and asked for food. Joseph thought, I will play a trick on my brothers to see if they've changed their ways. But at the last minute, Joseph changed his mind. He had compassion on his family. Joseph told his brothers who he really was. The brothers were shocked. Joseph forgave his brothers. They reconciled. Then Jacob and the whole family came to live with Joseph in Egypt. What do you want to say, Milo? No, no one. Do you, do you remember what reconciliation means? 
What's it mean, Rachel? It means to bring peace. Yep, to bring peace. I want to say it. Okay, what does it mean? Bring peace. To bring peace. That's one thing each group of lessons has a key concept or word. So like this one was the reconciliation. But coming up, they're going to learn awe. And this, this is a good one. Trust. So those are coming up for them to be learning about. Okay. So when Joseph was reconciled with his brothers, do you remember what he said to them? I know it has helped us through some times where people have not treated us kindly and maybe meant to do us harm. Remember the verse? Yeah, yeah, because you say it a lot. <laughs> Paraphrase, paraphrasing. Paraphrasing. What you intended for my evil, God, to my good. There you go. What you intended for evil, God has turned to my good. Because Joseph ended up being the second most powerful person in uh, Egypt. Duh. <laughs> okay. So we want to play the video for lesson four. And I'm tripping over cords. Hi there, I'm Abigail. Today, we're still learning about Joseph and his journey. Remember that his brothers sold him when they were upset. Joseph has done a lot of things since he has been away from them, and now he's in the place of power. In our Bible story today, we finally get to see reconciliation between Joseph and his family. Wow, that took a very long time. You see, Joseph's family needed help because they were running out of food. His family came to the city to ask an important man for help, but they didn't even realize that man was Joseph. Joseph was still hurt by what his brothers did to him, but he also wanted peace with his brothers. When he told his brothers who he was, his brothers were nervous because of what they had done. Then they realized that Joseph had forgiven them and that they could be a family again. What an amazing story. Sometimes the people who hurt you ask for forgiveness first but sometimes the person who was hurt can offer forgiveness first. In this case, Joseph offered forgiveness and reconciliation to his brothers first. They were grateful and able to have peace again. One time in school, I was taking a test and I sat next to my best friend. After the test, our teacher talked with us and asked if we had cheated. My friend started crying and said she cheated off my test. I was really hurt because I trusted her. I was angry for a long time and didn't want to sit by her anymore. After a couple of weeks, I decided that I wanted to make peace. Instead of waiting for her to apologize, I told her that we could be friends if she didn't do that again. After I said this, she promised not to. She even said thank you and that she was sorry. I didn't realize how sad she felt about what she did. I learned that you can take the power of reconciliation into your own hands if you want to. Even small conflicts can have a big effect on our lives. Imagine a pond of water. Even if you throw one tiny pebble into it, there's a ripple that makes all of the water move in the pond. Conflict is the tiny pebble which affects the whole pond, and the ripples are the hurt that you feel. Reconciliation can take a long time for the hurt to settle down. Some things might happen and it's okay right away, and other times it might take a while. Joseph's story shows us that it can be worth the wait. Now it's your turn to wonder. Okay, as we as we um, we have reviewed and done our children's church lesson for the week, I want to say thank you to Katie first of all and most of all because she takes us. She's she takes the responsibility to be a co-leader with me. She helps me decide on curriculum. She helps me um, every other week. She's back there teaching the kids. And uh, I appreciate her so much. Also, Kiana. Kiana helps me so much. And um, 
like last week, we both wanted to be in here for the message, so Kiana took Children's Church, isn't that great? And Sam and Tyler, they help quite a bit. And uh, it's just wonderful to have somebody back there in case somebody has to go to the bathroom. You know, you don't want to send them by themselves, or you, you know, you just need, you need a helper. And uh, not only that, but she, uh, she helps explain some of the concepts that I go over their heads on. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Right. Right, right. Because we are a one room Sunday school, Katie is saying it helps to have somebody that can help the little ones while we're, we're helping the older ones do different things. Yeah. So that we do appreciate you, Kiana, very much. And, you know, she's had a baby and got a new job all in the last few months. And Katie got, had to move. And uh, so we have, we've been a little sporadic in our children's church and not, not always on top of things as much as we should have been. But uh, I do appreciate all the help that we get. And another thing. Yes, Jackie helps, yes. Before she hurt her boo-boo wrist, you know, she used to help me cut things. I'm not, I'm not good at cutting things out. That's not my gift. <laughs> so when we have to cut things, it's always nice to have somebody on hand to, uh, to help with that, especially because, you know, you got little ones that can't always do the craft or the activity and helps to have another adult, whether it's Kiana or Jackie, to help with you know, help them do it because sometimes you just have to do it for them instead of, and you try to help them, but sometimes you just have to do it for them. The last thing I want to do is encourage you to invite your grandchildren and friends who don't have a church or who don't go anywhere. You know, we want, bring your kids, bring the grandkids. Um, as long as they're children's church age, we would love to have them. Um, not necessarily nursery kids, unless you've got to bring them all, and then we'll work out the nursery thing. But uh, kids who aren't going to church need to go to church. They need to get into the habit. They need to be taught about Jesus. And if you can get them young, nine times out of ten, what's the scripture say? Bring up a child in the way you should go, and he'll remember it when he is old. So thank you for your kind attention. I'm going to turn this over to my husband, Pastor Carl. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, I want to read a scripture. And then, um, do I have your permission, Dad? Mom? Okay. Okay. Just making sure I didn't ask you if I could. I told you what I wanted to, but I didn't ask you if I, if I could. So I'm doing it in front of everybody so you can't say no. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you ever, ever wonder why when we try to teach children how to behave in church, why in the world the pastor would have a race up and down the aisle with the kids? Ever think about that? Oh, I know you have, because I've thought about it, you know, what to teach them. Well, there's a reason for that, um, and I really believe that if Jesus was the pastor here, he'd do the same thing. Not only do the kids need to learn how to behave, um, they also need to learn they are loved, and that they're allowed to be them. And they have more energy than I can imagine. And when I run one race, they want to run three more, and I can't. <laughs> right, Milo? You always want to go again. Why do you always want to go again? You win the first time. Isn't that enough? Uh, no. But they sure make me stay, yeah, they sure make me stay in shape, that's for sure. But why do I do it? Because I want to teach all of us, not just them. The children matter. Let me read to you four verses. I like that. Sermon with four verses. You know how that always goes, right? This is Jesus. In uh, the Gospel of Mark, in the 10th chapter, starting with the 13th verse, 
People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. Can you imagine Jesus blessing kids? Can you imagine the commotion? Can you imagine the dancing and the running? The narration went off on the side. Parents, you're trying to keep your kids behave. You know, and they're not cooperating. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. I just checking. You're awake. Um, they brought him for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. They went to the moms and dads and said, uh, not. Nah, don't, don't bother the master. He's got important things to do. More important than running races, of course. And when Jesus saw this, here's what it says. He was indignant. Do you know what indignant means? He got mad. He got mad. He was downright upset that they would stop those children from coming to him. And here's what he said to them. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive uh, the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter in it. Folks, we got things to learn from our kids. I don't care how young they are. We need to be like them. We need to step out. If you tell a kid Jesus loves, loves them, guess what? They'll tell you, Jesus loves me. They don't. They don't need it explained. They just know what love is, and they know what, what, what it is, and Jesus is willing to run races with them, just like pastors are willing to run races with them. By the way, I don't expect some of my seniors, Ken, I don't expect you to take your cowboy boots off and run races, okay? Don't worry about it. <laughs> then Jesus, um, he, he said, we, we need to be like a child. And he took the children, verse Verse 16 says, and he took the children in his arms and he placed his hands on them and he blessed them. He blessed them. We are blessed, folks. Yet I make messes. For sure. Yeah, they run with pastor. For sure. And sometimes they don't behave. We get it. And we are blessed. Our church is happening. Doesn't look like much, does it? I just want to remind you, Jesus started with just 12. Look at the church today. Oak Hills is up to something. I want to say something to you grandmas and grandpas, and Debbie's right, invite your kids, invite your grandkids. I was listening to Louise uh, Palau, oh, it's probably about two months ago now. He came on, I was on my way to work. Came on the radio. You notice my radio is always on anymore. I learn a lot on the radio. He said something that intrigued me, but I've been making use of this for about a year now on Facebook. But he said that, um, grandparents, I want you to pay attention. He said, our children, and he, wasn't ta he, he, he was talking about teenagers mostly, but he said, our children, actually, grandparents have the ears. They, our children listen to their grandparents 88% of the time. They listen to the parents. Parents got some good news for you. They listen to parents. He said, um, I think it was right around 60% of the time. Don't quote me on that. And he said, and they listen to their friends about 30% of the time. Feels like the other way around, doesn't it? Grand grandparents, you have a huge impact. I get on Facebook. Um, I use Facebook Messenger at lunchtime, uh, break times, and I'll, I'll text my, my oldest grandson. And I'll tell him, uh, I'll give him dating advice. On Friday, I always say, hey, it's date night. He's got a girl. He's thinking about buying her a ring. He's 19. He's going to college. Thinking about buying her a ring. He's pretty serious. And I give him tips on, diet, on dating. Like, I tell him things like, you want to wear a collared shirt and a buttoned shirt. Chicks dig it. I give him all kinds of cool. Like, it would be good, have you shaved yet? You get more kisses. <laughs> you know, Take her out somewhere and treat her. Don't, don't, don't just take her down to the burger joint, but take her to a nice restaurant and send me some, some of those food pictures that you did it, you know? I get uh, some replies from her. We, I, um, he thinks she's the one, so I sent him. I said, did you, did, 
um, I said to him, did you uh, give her the test yet? Has she passed uh, the, one, the test that says, tells you she's a one, the one test? He said, well, what's the one test? I said, oh, you need to go and ask her four questions. First, does she love Jesus, okay? Does she love Jesus? That's the most important question. Second, second question is, do, will, she let, will she let your grandfather name your children, okay? I get to name the kids. Uh, if she'll let if she'll let you name your offspring, then she's got to be the one. She says yes to those two. You know she's working pretty good. There are two more questions. I said uh, the second question actually it was three questions, and I said the fourth one is kind of like a bonus bonus question. Now I'm an Ernest Goes to Camp fan. Most of you hate those movies. I said uh, I said uh, and I've sat down with all my grandchildren. They've never seen Ernest. Ernest is just ridiculous. Yeah, you're you're smiling. You've seen it. It's ridiculous. I laugh at him like crazy. All right, there's two movies. I like that kind of, you know, that slapstick comedy anyhow. The Galaxy Quest is the other. It's a spoof. Um, um, what is Tim's last name? I can't think of his name. The guy, huh? The play, huh? Yeah, Tim Allen. He plays on that Galaxy Quest, which is a spoof of, of tr Star Trek. And um, he, he, he plays those, and I, you know, and so if she doesn't like Ernest Goes to Camp, if she doesn't like that, then, then don't marry her. Um, but it, but if she doesn't like that, if it's so so, I said to him, I said then it, then she's got to at least like Galaxy Quest, and if she doesn't like that, and we with my grandkids we go around and go, you know they they open up the spaceship and and they land on the planet, and he goes, said well, you don't know if you can breathe out there, and he said well, seems all right to me, you know that kind of humor. If she can say yes to those, she's worth marrying. I ask him, did you give her the pop quiz yet? No. Nope, you finally gave her the pop quiz. She got two of them right. She said if, she, and then she said she wants to have the experience of, of, of watching Ernest go to camp with me. All right. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Declan, you want to come up here with Pop Pop for a moment? We're going to close with this. Come on up here, buddy. All right. I want to. Put you up here, all right? Do you remember yesterday? Did I come to your house? Yeah. Yep, yep. What what'd we do? What did we do, buddy? You don't remember. Did we play swords? Here. So they can hear you. Talk into that, all right? Say hi. Hi. There you go. That works. So did we play swords? Yes. Did we play swords? Yeah. We did, didn't we? Did I lose? Did you rebuild me or did you rebuild you? You rebuilt it and I rebuilt it. Okay. Whisper into the mic. Okay. So you rebuilt it, right? You got all, yeah. Then we went back and we swang, didn't we? We were on the swing. Remember being on a swing? Mm -hmm. You do that? Did I push you high? Yeah. For a long time you swang. Did you, did you ever get done swinging? No, you'd like to swing some more, wouldn't you? We were talking, weren't we? I gave you a, a history, history test, right? Did, did you have a history? Did I tell you how your dad met your mom? Did he fall off the porch? Yeah. He did, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He fell for your mom, didn't he? He did, didn't he? Did you tell your dad? Do you remember what you told your dad? Did you tell your dad you're a theologian? Can you say theologian? Yeah. Theologian. Yeah. You are a theologian, aren't you? You remember what you learned? Did you, did, do you don't remember? Oh, let me whisper to you. Do you remember talking about carnal nature? Yeah. Tell them, tell them. What did we talk about? All right. Carnal nature? You don't know. Was it carnal nature? Well, tell them, tell them. We talked about carnal nature. We talking about carnal nature. Yeah. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Do you, do you remember what, what I said? Remember I told you what that meant? There's a song that, that plays, bad to the bone. Huh? Is that our carnal nature, bad to the bone? Mm -hmm. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we're bad to the bone, aren't we? Actually, I'm not bad to the bone. Oh, you're not bad to the bone! <laughs> That's not what you said yesterday. Carnal nature means we're bad to the bone. Well, your dad, your dad, what, did you tell your dad? You're sitting on my hand. Really? My head. Yeah, because we're bad to the bone, Jesus had to come, didn't he? Remember I said that? No. 
You don't remember that. Boy, you don't remember very long, do you? Uh-huh. I remember everything else. You remember everything else but that. Is that right? Well, because of our carnal nature, we're bad to the bone, and Jesus came to help us, didn't he? So we could be good again, right? Right. You did a good job. Thanks. You did an awesome job. Told you you could preach. We're bad to the bone. That's why Jesus came. Because we have a carnal nature. Teach them while they're young. Okay? I work in the schools. This is not what they're teaching them. What our schools are teaching is, is that we can fix our own problem. We don't need God. That's humanism. Kids are precious. We've been given wonderful, wonderful gifts. Yeah. They're having fun back there, Declan. Go with them. Rachel, you want to come up and close with prayer? You want to come up and pray? Your prayers would be great. Can you just ask God to bless us? It's all right. I'll help you. Come on. Wouldn't it be cool if God would let these people go home and just bless them all over the place that they're, they would have such a wonderful day? Wouldn't it? Have a seat. Have a seat. Come on up here. That's my girl. What I want you to do is just real simple. Would you just ask dear Jesus to bless all these people when they go, as they go home? Can you do that? Can, can you just pray that? Will you do that? Just try it. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Bless all these people. Bless all these people. So that they have a wonderful day. So that they have a wonderful day. Amen. Amen. Good job. Good job. Yeah. I couldn't have done it any better. God bless you. Came to save us.